Can I sit there too? Lola refused to move, so I'm just perched right on the end of this armchair. I know my place. Um, welcome to the beginning of a new reading vlog. This vlog is going to be me reading books that my favourite authors and some of my favourite people have recommended to me. Now, I must say before I start that these are not books that authors press into my hand saying, this is the best book that I have ever read, you must read it right now. These just came out of conversations that we were having and I have four of them here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to all four in this reading vlog, but we'll see how many we can get to. I've got about six days, so six days to see how much I can read in that time. So the two authors in question are the lovely Max Porter and the lovely Sarah Moss. Now Max and I were chatting last year sometime about the Frida Klein books because I had convinced him to read them and both him and his wife now love them and I gleefully take responsibility for that and he was asking me if I had read the Martin Beck series which is a series of Swedish crime novels from the 1960s. He thought I would like them so I've bought the first one which is called Rosanna and I'm going to be reading that in this video. We'll talk about plot and all of that stuff later and then I think it was 2019. I honestly can't remember time means nothing to me anymore but anyway Sarah and I met for lunch and we went book shopping and we are terrible for each other and we're just recommending books because we'll just pick up what the other person is suggesting and because I know you will probably ask the books that I suggested to her were Margaret the First, A Place for Us and I had also gifted her a copy of How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Oranger another time because it reminded me of I think it was Ghost War or Summer Water, I don't remember, but the tension in that book, I thought she would really love it. And she did. So anyway, she told me to buy these three books and I haven't read them because I'm a terrible person. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna rectify that in this video. So briefly, we have got Silver and Salt by Eleanor Dimmitt. We have All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves. And we have Improvement by Joan Silver. So those are four books that I will be reading from over the coming week. We can talk about plot and all that stuff as we go, and we can see if I agree with Max and Sarah, if I like them, if I don't. If I don't, I'm really sorry. It's really awkward when you read recommendations by other people. Let's hope I like them. Um, otherwise, I'm, I might have to avoid them in the future. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so I'm gonna be reading these. As usual, in reading vlogs, I will be taking you on walks and doing some cooking. Um, what I would quite like to do right now is go and try and find an ingredient that came in a gusto box last week. It was for a pasta dish, but it was called Fable, and it's these mushrooms, pulled mushrooms, and it was incredible. It was the best meat substitute I'd ever had in like a ragu type sauce, and I can't buy them online, but there is a shop not that far from us that I can walk to and I think they may have it. So I'm gonna grab my mask and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see if they have it. And if they do, I'm gonna make um, a ragu tonight. I mean, if I can, because you may have noticed my shoulder is absolutely screwed at the moment. <laughs> Having lovely arthritis flare up right now and I'm very much not enjoying it. So please do help distract me by joining me for this vlog. I would appreciate it. This vlog is also very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers, but we'll talk about that later. All right. Let's go on the hunt for some mushrooms. some quite frankly amazing foreshadowing in that last clip. It is now a whole month 
later. I said in that last clip that I had six days to film this video and, and I did. But then, as I mentioned, my shoulder wasn't good and I thought it was something relatively minor. And then I woke up the, that weekend and I uh, couldn't move. Um, and it has been a miserable month of trying to get back on my feet after having severely injured my shoulder. I'm not gonna bore you with it because I've already bored you with it in another video. I was feeling very sorry for myself and it's just been rubbish. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. I am on the mend, touch this wooden table that you are sitting on um, and uh, coming back to myself. No longer have a pinched nerve from the inflammation, which makes a big difference. It means I can actually sit on a chair, which is great. So, <laughs> it's a month later. Um, when I was in the deepest depths of pain, I thought, I wanna read and I'll try find an audiobook of one of these books for this video. So I did that. I mean, some of the audiobooks of these books are terrible. The, um, the crime one, is it Martin Beck? The Martin Beck book was just monotonous and had terrible reviews because of the narrator. And obviously the narrator makes a huge difference. But I found um, Silver and Salt on audio and I listened to it and it was a, a DNF from me. Now I feel like we should contextualize. I don't think this would ever have been a book that I loved but let's be real, I was surviving on about an hour a night sleep for the week that I was listening to it and I was in a lot of pain and I'm sure that made me not really gel with whatever I was trying to consume at that time. In fact, after trying to listen to this audiobook, I just gave up and went back to Frida Klein because it was the only thing that I could listen to because I know it inside out. I just couldn't listen to anything new. But... I do have some valid points, I think, to make about this book as to why I didn't particularly love it for reasons other than I was in a lot of pain and didn't want to be uh, dealing with a book that I didn't immediately completely fall in love with. So this is a book about two sisters. Ruthie is um, called by her sister Vinny back to Greece because their father has passed away. Their relationship has been really fraught. Something definitely went on in their past. And we follow two timelines. We follow the two sisters in the present day. And then we also look back at how their parents met and then at their childhood as well. Her father, or their father, I should say, was a photographer, a famous photographer. And Ruthie finds lots of his undeveloped photographs that she then goes to develop. And I just felt that the imagery in the book was really heavy handed. There was an extended metaphor of Ruthie finding these hidden memories, i.e. these undeveloped photographs, and her being in a dark room to develop these memories and remember and come to terms with her past. In a way, it's kind of beautiful, but I just felt as though it was so... I'm going to hit you over the head with it, that it lost all its charm. Another example of something that kind of infuriated me with regard to heavy-handed imagery is this. When they'd finished, she thanked him for dinner, then, taking a piece of thyme from her plate, she reached across and pressed it into his mouth. Please, don't be too quick with me. Because it's time, isn't it? Those are the kind of things that just make me want to throw a book across a room. Um, it's not subtle. And, and I like subtlety when it comes to imagery like that. So, I wasn't loving it because the plot didn't really draw me in but then it was more the storytelling style and the way the imagery was used that ultimately made me think I am going to part ways with this one thank you very much so this one was a no and now I think going to move on to improvement maybe or maybe the Miriam Taves I don't know but you will see in the next clip whichever one I decide to pick up next I will insert some footage here of a walk a walk that I went on last month, a whole month ago. I mean, it's autumn now. It's autumn now. So this was at the very end of, of summer, really, because it was the beginning of September, end of August, beginning of September. I'm very sad. This injury has robbed me of September, which is my favourite month. But what are you going to do? We have to just continue with life. October will be good. I predict it. I'm predicting it for all of us. All right, here is a walk and I will check back in with you in a bit.
dog he's been left at home and he is um he's sad about it i want to go around and give him a hug um, i mentioned at the beginning of this vlog that this video is very kindly sponsored by serious readers so i just wanted to take a moment to talk to you about that with my little pal here um i've worked with serious readers before a year ago over a year ago maybe this time last year they got in touch with me to ask if they could send me one of their reading lights because they know that I love reading and also a good reading light is super important to me because my disability affects my eyesight and whilst a good reading light can't fix that it can help make reading more comfortable you don't need to have any issues with your eyesight to have a good reading light we should all be taking care of our eyes but just in case that extra bit is applicable to you or someone you know I thought I would mention it. So they sent me this a year ago, which is one of their high definition lamps. I'll do a cutaway so you can see her in all her glory. She's a floor lamp. You can get cordless versions or wired versions. Mine is wired, but even though it has a plug, I can very easily take it from here in the living room up to my office. You'll have seen it in the backdrop of a lot of my videos. Very easy to move around. So they use in their high definition lights and in their Alex lights, something called, let me get this right, daylight wavelength technology. Basically it's this super impressive technology that they have engineered, which means that the light replicates daylight as accurately as possible, which means that it is more comfortable to read as the sun goes down. They are a British company. All of their series lights are made in the UK. They are a family run company as well. And their lights are so good that they have been used in operating theaters. And not only that, but they have been used in submarines and spaceships. So their lights have gone as far down into the ocean as any human has gone and as far into space as any human has gone as well. And if that is not an endorsement for good lights in dark situations, then I don't really know what is. Their lights come with customizable options, including different colored bodies, arms, height, adjustability, and as I mentioned before, cordless technology as well. Their lights come with a five year warranty and they have an offer for you. So if you would like to buy any light in the Sirius Light range, high definition, Alex light or classic light, you will also receive a free compact light, which I use on my bedside table for reading at night. It's fantastic, which is valued at 150 pounds. So you will get that free in your order, which is pretty damn cool. The code that you need for that is Gen16, and I'll put that in the description box down below, along with all of the other information. Go over to their website, check them out. And I just wanna say that, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have been away from work for a month, and initially I was supposed to get this footage up a month ago, and I just like to shout out understanding kind companies, and when I approached them and said, I am so sorry, but I am so ill and I cannot do this video right now, they were the most understanding people. I like to know when companies are good humans as well as making good products, so I just wanted to pass that on. I've always had such a, a brilliant relationship with them and they've always been a joy to work with. So yes, thank you very much to Serious Readers for sponsoring this video and making fantastic reading lights, which makes my life a lot easier.
very backlit here, but it's going to be a very short clip, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> I started reading the Martin Beck book, which is called uh, Rosanna, and it is the first in a series, but I'm DNFing this one too, and I'm just really not having a good time in this vlog, and I'm really disappointed, because I thought that... Obviously, I thought I would really enjoy these books. That's why I purchased them, not just because they were recommended um, by other people. But I think this one is just a case of um, the, the writing style is really not to my taste, which I guess was a similar thing to the last book, but this is just for a very different reason. So this is a crime novel, and we're following Martin Beck, who's a detective, and um, a woman has been um, murdered. She washed up naked there's a lot of very stereotypical crime stuff in here talking about women in a specific way when it comes to violent crime it is from the 60s um but that's that's not the reason that i'm dnfing it it's very clipped and very direct and what i enjoy with with crime fiction is really getting to grips with characters. I enjoy slightly slower paced novels where we can get a glimpse into everyone's lives and it's not just boom, 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 boom. Um, but I wanna give you an example of, of what this book is like. So for instance, in this section, he's coming home um, to Stockholm and as soon as he gets in the front door, we talk about his wife's bra, I mean, whatever. And then we cover him taking a nap, going back to work, coming home, going to sleep, getting woken up at one in the morning, uh, the next five days and then a month within the space of a page and I am as I said just not into that darting all over the place kind of style it just makes me feel as though I am disorientated and not in a good way not as in oh this is all a whirlwind um and clearly the characters are trying to get to grips with stuff and I'm trying to get to grips with that at the same time and the writing is reflecting that. This just feels as though I don't particularly care about telling you about the characters so I'm not going to so let's just skip ahead to when something interesting happens and um no it's not my cup of tea so I'm gonna stop reading this one as well and Max I'm sorry I still love you very much um, and he's recommended loads of great books to me, aside from this one, I should say. He introduced me to Daughter Norse. In fact, Max even introduced me to Sarah Moss because Max used to be Sarah's editor. So I think he gets major kudos for that, you know? Great. Okay, so let's move on to the next book. I think I'm going to go on to um, uh, All My Puny Sorrows next. But before we do that, let me show you this very cute clip of a squirrel in our garden who was hiding some nuts. And after he hid some nuts, under some leaves, he would pat down the leaves like this, as though that would cover everything and make sure that nobody could see it. It really tickled me. This lighting is slightly better, isn't it? Um, I know that our garden needs uh, a lot of work and actually our fence fell down last night, which you can't see in that clip because that clip was from a few days ago. A fence fell down in a storm. Um, luckily it's a fence that we'd already had booked in to be replaced, but yeah, our, our garden is, um... <laughs> I was gonna say shabby chic, it's not even shabby chic, it's, it's shabby right now, but it will look a lot better once new fences in and then we can attack the rest of the garden and plant some things and we can do all that end of this year so that we'll have flowers for next year and I'm looking forward to that. It's not top of my list right now because we've had a lot of things, a lot of things going on, but I wanted to add in another clip today because I feel like so far this vlog has not been hugely positive in the loving books sense and I just wanted to pop in and say that I've started reading All My Puny Sorrows by, um, by Miriam Taves and I am really enjoying this one. I thought this was the one I was probably gonna, maybe not the one I would enjoy the most, but the one that I was most confident that I would enjoy because um, I have heard so many people say that they love this book, whereas all three of the others are books that I don't think I'd ever heard anyone else talk about before. Um, so that's quite interesting, I guess. A few of them are book list titles, but not book list? Back list titles, but not all of them, anyway. All My Puny Sorrows is her debut novel, and I think it is quite heavily inspired by her own life. This is a very upsetting book and content warnings for suicide. In here, she's talking about her relationship with her sister. 
who has attempted suicide several times and also her father who died by suicide a few years earlier and uh, Miriam Taves lost both her sister and her father to suicide in real life so this whilst it is very difficult to read is clearly coming from the point of view of someone who's experienced these things and who has thought about it a lot and therefore I feel as though the subject matter is approached with a lot of respect which I think is really important when we're talking about this kind of literature. I do enjoy a book about sisters as well so our main character is called Yoli she's talking about her sister Elf. Her sister is a concert pianist and both of them are from a Mennonite family in Canada the same as the author is actually. Elf is getting ready to go on tour a worldwide tour and I did wonder if the name Elf is kind of a two fingers up to the manic pixie dream girl trope that you can sometimes find in fiction. I think that might be something that's interesting to think about. I'll see how I feel about that as the novel progresses. And I just am really enjoying the way that this book is written. I think that it is poignant and it has quite a bit of rich imagery. It doesn't feel like overindulgent though. I feel like it toes that line quite well. I've underlined this bit here, which I thought I would read to you. This is one of the more indulgent bits, but again, I don't think it's overindulgent. Then Elf tells me that she has a glass piano inside her. She's terrified that it will break. She can't let it break. She tells me it's squeezed right up against the lower right side of her stomach, that sometimes she can feel the hard edges of it pushing at her skin, that she's afraid it will push through and she'll bleed to death. But mostly, she's terrified that it will break inside her. I ask her what kind of piano it is, and she tells me that it's an old, upright Heinzmann that used to be a piano player, but the old mechanism has been removed and the whole thing has been turned into glass, even the keys. Everything. When she hears bottles being thrown into the back of a garbage truck, or wind chimes, or even a certain type of bird singing, she immediately thinks that the piano is breaking. A child laughed this morning, she said, a little girl here visiting her father, but I didn't know it was laughter. I thought it was the sound of glass shattering and I clutched my stomach thinking, oh no, this is it. When the two sisters are together, Yoli only wants to talk about their childhood, like she's mining and trying to find answers as to why her family has turned out the way it has. She has a lot of resentment, but also love that she feels towards her sister because she feels as though herself, Yoli is a complete wreck and is falling apart, but the elf is the one who gets all the attention for feeling terrible because she acts on her impulses. And Yoli recognizes that this is a selfish thing to feel because she is clearly, in many ways, in a more fortunate position than elf because she can stop herself acting on these impulses that she has. But she has this petulant childlike quality that she wants to be rewarded for for remaining and not trying to take her own life and for having this solidarity with her sister. And I think that seems like a very realistic set of emotions to explore. So Yoli only wants to talk about the past when she's with Elf, she wants to talk about their childhood, but Elf only wants to talk about the present day and how Yoli is and Yoli doesn't want to do that. We don't know anything about Yoli for the first chunk of the novel that I have read she never talks about herself she doesn't talk about her own family as an adult she doesn't talk about her job or what she's up to she very much just focuses on her sister and it appears as though Elf is traumatized by childhood and doesn't want to talk about it whereas Yoli is traumatized by the present day in her current life and her current circumstances and doesn't want to talk about that so these sisters are like a flip side of the same coin. It's really interesting. So those are my thoughts so far. I would say I've read about, uh, maybe about a fifth of the book so far, maybe a little bit more, maybe a quarter. And I am very much enjoying it. And I thought I would show you what book post arrived this morning. Actually what post arrived in general, because I got some lovely flowers in the post this morning from um, a couple of friends of mine, which was very nice. I will insert them here. They're looking very autumnal and also two books arrived so one of them is a present for my niece I'm getting ahead with um I'm gonna say the c word Christmas present buying just because I don't want to be doing it all at once and if I see something and think oh I think that person will like it I have a box and I just put things in so this is one that is for her which is Once Upon a Fairy Tale and it's by the O'Hara sisters this is a choose your own adventure story but it's not one of those choose your own adventure stories where you'll choose an option and it'll say if you choose this go to page 
to whatever. It, it's more simple than that. So we've got, so the hero took out, if I lean so you can see, the cloak and skipped past the guards, or the ring and swam up the drain pipe, or the shoes and wished to be inside. You choose which one you want, and then you just go on to the next page and you choose the next option again. Um, so definitely more suited to younger children, and I think that she will really like this. I hope she will really like this. And then another book that I was sent in the post is a review copy. This is from Granta, and it's Japanese translated fiction. It's very, very short. This is Weasels in the Attic by Hiroko Oyamada. Now, I have read her before. What have I read? I wonder if she's part of the Strangest Press series, because I recognise her name, also apologies if you can hear the washing machine in the background. Anyway, this is translated from the Japanese by David Boyd. It says, two friends meet across three dinners. I love that. Now, some of you asked me if I would recommend books that were set at dinner parties because I said it was one of my favorite things to read about. So I might do that in the future. I don't know if I have enough to uh, recommend, but maybe I could do a reading vlog themed around it. Anyway, two friends meet across three dinners. In the back room of a pet shop, they snack on dried shrimps and discuss fish breeding. In a remote new home in the mountains, they look for a solution to a weasel infestation. During a dinner party in a blizzard, a mountain claustrophobia makes way for uneasy dreams. Their conversations often take them in surprising directions, but when one of the men becomes a father, more and more is left unsaid. I really like the sound of that. So that one can go on the TBR pile. Okay, I'm gonna go back to reading and I'll come back to you when I finish this book. So happy to confirm that I did end up loving all my puny sorrows. Also, this is our bedroom. Someone said they missed the setup of my videos in our old flat and they miss seeing my wardrobe with wigs on top and it's, it's oh, ignore the flowers, over there in the background. Let me pop you back down. But I think the um, reason that I love this so much is because the writing feels effortless, but I love the attention to detail that's put into the imagery where there's a lot of subtle things bubbling under the surface. Not like with the first book in this video, which was silver and salt. This feels as though it's something that you can really tap away at and notice more the more that you look at it. So we're looking at inherited trauma in this narrative and how all of the characters in this book are really trying to understand those around them, like desperately so. Yoli and Elf's mum keeps on reading whodunit books, that's something that helps her get to sleep at night, and she has this deep, deep worry that she has somehow infected everyone in her family, and that's why everyone is so sad, and the way that she's able to make herself feel more concrete and more anchored is by reading these crime books which happen to have answers at the end and someone who can be held accountable. And at one point Elf's partner Nick offers his car to Yoli so that she can drive it around but he says careful though the driver's seat isn't working you have to climb over the passenger seat in order to get to the driver's seat. And you can interpret that as characters feeling as though they have no direction that they can control. They can't get in the driving seat of their own life without having to climb over and affect other people in the process. They feel as though they're doing that to other people and that other people are doing it to them. I just thought that it was so well balanced, so well handled. Yes, this is a devastating book and it will rip you to shreds. So be prepared for that. And obviously be very sensitive of the subject matter if that's not something you, you don't, but if that's not something you don't, if that's not something you want to read about, then stay away from this book. But if you can handle the subject matter, then I very much recommend it. And um, I am very much relieved <laughs> to be loving one of the books in this video that that makes me happy. I would love to tell you that I am starting this clip 
to declare that we are ending the vlog on the highest note ever, but unfortunately, <laughs> we are not. So I have read Improvement by Joan Silver. I didn't read the blurb before going into this one because I knew I was gonna read these anyway, and it's been so long since I bought this, I just thought, I'm just gonna dive straight in. And we open with a character called Raina, whose boyfriend is currently in prison. She has a young child with somebody else, and she's talking about her aunt Kiki in a similar way actually to the beginning of All My Puny Sorrows. She's not talking about herself, she's talking about her family and deflecting the reader's attention from her onto someone that she's almost mythologizing in a way. Her aunt Kiki has been away in Turkey for I think it was eight years and she's this very mysterious character to them. So we follow Raina for the first part of the novel, and I thought it was all going to be about her, but it's actually a novel in the form of an interconnected short story collection, and this book passes the storytelling baton to another character, and we move on and then spend time with them. Ultimately, this is a book that's about characters' flaws and failures, them trying to improve themselves and perhaps succumbing to temptation along the way. I think the thing that I didn't love about it as much was how many different subjects it was trying to cover because we're talking about single motherhood, we're talking about estranged family members, we're talking about prison, we're talking about race and prison, we're talking about Islam, we're talking about smugglers in Europe, we're talking about infidelity. There is so much going on in this book and I thought, this is definitely a book that is well written, but it's not the kind of thing that I am particularly drawn to because as I mentioned with the um, the crime novel, I kind of want to deep dive with a couple of characters and stay with them. I think that's definitely my favourite kind of book. I would say that if you enjoy Rose Tremaine's work, then you will really enjoy this. I had a similar feeling when I was reading a book of hers last year, the name of which currently escapes me, I'll put the cover here, where she was trying to cover so many different territories, so many different cultures, and it just didn't feel believable to me. Instead of making a rich tapestry with all of the different characters she was discussing, I just couldn't really see all of them in 3D in the way that I particularly want to as a reader. So this one, unfortunately, wasn't for me either, but I can definitely see the merit in it, and I can see why lots of people would and do enjoy it. In a similar vein to Silver and Salt, I can appreciate these titles, but they're not ones that are gonna be favorites, personally. So overall, was this vlog a success? Possibly not. <laughs> it wasn't, but it was interesting because I kind of assumed I would love all of these books, but maybe that was a naive assumption. Why should I love books that my favorite writers love? As I've said in this video, I have loved other books that they have recommended, so it does hold true, it just doesn't happen to have been true this time round, and that's absolutely okay. Uh, and I thank Sarah and Max for giving me these recommendations um, historically, and I'm sure I will ask them for recommendations again in the future. I would love to know if you have read any of these books and which ones you've enjoyed, if so. I absolutely loved all my puny sorrows. That's definitely a win for this video and I will I will take that to the bank. I absolutely will because it was a gem of a book to read. I thought before um, I disappear I would show you some more book posts that arrived today. Two books I've purchased from Tilted Axis Press which is one of my favourite publishers. So I bought this essay collection which is called Violent Phenomena 21 Essays on Translation and it's edited by Kavita Benot and Jeremy Chiang. I am so excited to get to this one. So I think we've got work in here by uh, Karani Baraka. Yes, we have Anton Her as well. Who else do I recognize? That may be all I recognize actually. So there are lots of different people in here for me to become acquainted with, which is very exciting. So as the title suggests, it is about translation and it's about colonialism, it's about power and words. And then I also bought this collection of poetry, which has a beautiful cover. This is Unexpected Vanilla by Lee Yemi and it's translated from the Korean by Sojay. I would read a few sample poems online and I love the folklore elements and the narrative voice. So let me read you the very beginning of a poem called Inside the Tower. I rose from sleep and descended an endless flight of stairs. Abandoning my lamp and wetting my heels in red, I went round and round the spiral staircase, but the stairs started up again and the golden bell I'd stolen grew heavier. 
If I were gifted too much light, I'd probably soon enter a stain. When I press my ears against these stone walls and call out to distant birds, trees spread their arms with all their bodies despair. Why am I inside this absence? The sleeper is still at the top of the whirling tower. I have a feeling that I'm gonna absolutely love this one. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up this reading vlog here. It feels good to get my teeth back into reading vlogs because it has been a while. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video and you're new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. If you do enjoy my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that'd be very kind. Link to that will be in the description box down below. Please don't forget to check out Serious Readers. As I said earlier in this video, I absolutely adore them. Link and discount code are in the description box down below. I'd love to hear from you in a comment. Let me know how you are, what you've been reading recently, and I'll be back with a new video very soon. Sending love. Bye.